Hey guys, this is the Frozen Gamer. So today I want to show you guys how to set up uh, the gyro controls for the Switch Pro Controller on Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. And this is really something that can apply to basically any game where you have um, a third person perspective and you want to use gyro aiming. Um, now, what I want to make clear here is that this is only for the third person games. If you, do, if you want to do first person, I highly recommend not setting it up this way, necessarily. Um, I can show some different ideas of how to do it if you do decide that you want to set it up for first person, but setting it up for third person games is, is going to be quite a bit different. So, um, first of all, we've got to see if we can actually get this functioning. Which right now it's not working properly. Okay, so I was having some technical difficulties there, but uh, let me show you guys real quick how you how you want to need to set up the controller configuration for this. All right, so first of all, uh, before I say anything else, you do have to make sure you have the Steam beta um, uh, ready to go for this, and you can see one of my other videos where I actually show you exactly how to set it up. Uh, specifically, I was showing it for Portal 2, but if you just look up how to get the initial setup going uh, for using the Switch Pro Controller, that'll get you going. Uh, you do have to use it wired, at least as far as my experience goes, it only works wired. But the nice thing about using it wired is that you that way you can still um, use the controller with the Switch without having to resync it. So. Um, in order to get the settings correct on controller, you have to go to controller configuration, which um, at least when you're when you're actually in game, you can just press the home button on the pro controller and then choose controller configuration. And um, most of the settings you can pretty much leave alone. I ended up changing around the buttons so that basically um, it, the physical layout matches with uh, with the uh, what the physical layout would be on an Xbox controller and the reason I did that is because basically the controls of this game are um, laid out the same way as in like the Batman Arkham games so um, normally if this was actually ported over to a Nintendo console uh, Y would be used for attacking X would be used for uh, countering A for um, For uh, some other things, I can't remember what. Um, I guess I guess usually like jumping over, over people um, or dodging, and then B would be used for. Um, no, I'm wrong by that. B B is normally used for for running and for dodging and for like jumping over people's backs and that sort of thing. And I can't remember what A is normally used for, but it doesn't really matter. Um, in, th in this particular game, it's it's used for things like um, draining or for um, for getting back elf shot. But anyway, going back to the configuration. So, uh, like I said, I, I changed around the button layout. Um, the prompts might throw you off a bit, but if you're used to playing like Arkham, any of the Batman Arkham games, or even to a lesser degree, things like Assassin's Creed, then you already basically are, are going to be used to the layout. It's going to feel natural to you. It's just reminding yourself that it's not that you're not actually playing with the physical layout of the Switch controller. And if you want to keep it the same way as it is on the original, on the actual Switch controller, by all means do it. For me, it just didn't feel natural. So, um, apart from that, the the key thing above all else uh, you do want to keep the joystick normal so keep joystick and everything else basically normal but then w the the major thing that changes is the gyro which is just right here in the center and what you want to have it set as is you want to do the style of input as mouse joystick now um, most of the features can be left basically on default but the one thing that is more important than anything else, and this is absolutely crucial to get the best um, use of the gyro for third person games, is changing the gyro enable button, which by default is on always on, to left trigger full pull. Um, 
That is essentially because you're using the left trigger to uh, use your bow. And so that way, by doing it this way, that is the only time in which the gyro is active. Now you might think, oh, but I like having the gyro active all the time. In a game like Splatoon, that does work. Um, and I think it actually works really well. But in Splatoon, it's also pretty much just uh, primarily used for up and down movements. And because of the fact that you don't aim down sights or anything in Splatoon, it makes more sense to have it that way. But in a game like uh, Shadow of Mordor or... Uh, the Tomb Raider reboot or uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, it's going to be better to have it only on when you're using the left trigger. So um, let, let me kind of show you guys the difference between the two, just so you can get an idea of why it is that it's better. So I'm going to have it on always on to start, just to give you an idea of how it feels comparatively. So this is when it's always on. And that might seem like, okay, that works just fine. and you know, if you want to do it this way, more power to you. But the one thing I found is that it really messes with the camera when you're in the middle of combat. And sometimes you can end up with a really awkward camera angles. And anytime you move the controller, the gyro is acting like this. So that's why I changed the configuration to going only activating with left trigger full pull. And then once that's set up, um, once again, you can mess with the sensitivity and everything if you want. I kept the sensitivity the same. I changed the gyro camera scale. Um, I think that what it does is it kind of determines where it goes by default. And so this way it just kind of stays in the middle. Um, so now that that's set up, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So right now I'm just using the joystick to move the camera. But as soon as I... Oh, I guess it might help if I'm not aiming at any guys who aren't enemies. There's an orc. It's much more precise than just a standard um, moving of the joystick. Now, I am finding it's tilting a little bit to the side, so that is one thing that I might have to mess around with a little bit, but that could also partially be a user error and since I have it wired and am right next to my desk it's also kind of messing with the cord so I'll try backing up a little bit Go. Just let a Karagor loose. I don't know if there's anything that I can actually uh, activate for it. I kind of doubt. Oh, I don't have any elf shot right now. Okay. Anyway. So that's kind of a, a good demonstration of the gyro on its own. Uh, specifically for, for fighting enemies. But, like yesterday I was playing this and I don't know why I didn't recognize that I needed to have it set for um, only being activated with left trigger pull. But that really does make a big difference. So basically it ends up being kind of like when you, um, when you play Zelda, um, you, that it's really only active when you're actually, when you're actually using the bow. Okay, let's see here. who's down there. up there, but I'm going to wait for him to turn around and see what I can do. Come on. He's kind of hovering. Desperate 
You call me a hoe? He's in jail for a reason. For saying what we're all thinking. You want to live forever? Plow in this field? The elves lord it over us. Don't they just? Sauron's right. We can live without pain, without growing old. And you want to go to war to make that happen? I want the king to listen to good ideas. Well, he should have nothing to do with Sauron. Fighting with the elves is not a bad idea. It's the worst idea imaginable. I think I'm gonna play long enough to go hunt down. No blood of this war over in my here. Veins. I am a Northman, an exile. Hollis never let me forget that, and Yorith never cared. To the Eldar, all men are the followers, fleeting visitors who soon pass beyond the circles of the world. Okay, let's see. Where is this guy? He is. for that's weird hmm. okay I think I must not have the right person marked so let's see what we got here Maybe I will go ahead and head on over there. I was coming back from a hunt, and I heard something weird. Well, what kind of something? It was probably just boom screaming their heads off. Yeah, I'll come back and do that later. I'll go hunt down this other guy. Looks like we got just one guy over here. He's dead. They're free. sensitivity a little bit. Patrol found 
You heard the sound of your doom. Thank you. Please, you must go back and rescue my friends. They later. They so hard they could barely stand. I'm sure they'll be there later. Tricks on top. 
He looks exactly the same. Oh, because he's his twin, that's why. Okay. Oh, nice. Range shots or shadow strike. you're wondering the v-sync is kind of a weird setup because for some reason if you turn the v-sync on in this game then the main game you get a bunch of screen tearing so you have to turn it on at a hardware level but if you uh, turn on the v-sync I mean it, it, um, if you the, when the V-Sync is on, I think it eliminates the uh, the screen tearing and the cutscenes. This ragbag led us up the chain of command in spite of himself. He has a gift for failure. But well, I probably better call it good there. So anyway, just one more time. Actually, let me go ahead and pause that first. All right. So once more, controller configuration. You want gyro set to mouse-like joystick. You can adjust the sensitivity to your liking. But you, in order to make it only active when you're using the bow set it to left trigger full pull and this should be true uh, with a game where you're aiming down the sights as well so I think probably a game like um, The Division it would work just the same because the gyro does work in that game and um, yeah so that should be about it so until next time this has been the Frozen Gamer I'll talk to you guys later